Today, I wanted to discuss a relatively recent study that confirms the first ever discovery of a terrestrial, potentially Earth-like planet orbiting a distant white dwarf. But more intriguingly, it's really the way that this was discovered that's actually kind of exciting. This object, known as KMT 2020-BLG 0414-LB, was actually discovered using the technique known as microlensing, or essentially the observations we see sometimes when a distant star becomes relatively bright, or even very bright, for anywhere from a few days to possibly even a few years, to eventually dim back into its original brightness, which in essence then shows us that something very massive must have passed in front of a star to create these unusual effects. And using this technique, scientists have already discovered a lot of different objects that would be otherwise relatively invisible. But in 2020, one of the most productive such networks, KMTN or Korea Microlensing Telescope Network, that consists of the telescopes you see right here, once again discovered a star that suddenly became bright, increasing in luminosity by approximately a thousand times. Here's actually what the observations looked like before this event, and here's what the star looked like two days after the peak event. And while based on Einstein's theories, we know exactly what's happening here, and we can even use various models to try to figure out what actually passed in front of the star by essentially doing several things. First, by looking at the length of the event, we can usually tell how massive something was. Then, by using the combination of the total brightness and the length of the event, we can work out the distance and the mass once again. And if we detect any unusual extra peaks like the one you see right here, we can even speculate about an additional object in orbit. This is actually how a lot of different planets have been already discovered, although in this case we usually get to see them only once. These gravitational landing effects are basically just pure chance and usually happen relatively rarely for each individual star in any galaxy. So for example, in order to see the star create another lens, we'd probably have to wait at least another million years. But the initial observations did not really tell us exactly what this was, mostly because the lens itself was not really visible, and so it didn't seem like it was some kind of a star. But it was a relatively massive object, at least half the mass of the Sun, with a distance estimated to be 4,000 light years. And so following this initial discovery, researchers behind the study you can find in the description, so here we're talking about Heming Zhang and his team, decided to find out exactly what we saw here by doing a follow-up and observing the location where this lens came from by using another powerful telescope. In this case, CAC-2 10-meter Hawaii telescope, which contains powerful adaptive optics and allows us to see extremely distant objects really well. And so in this case, they looked at this object again three years later. But based on the initial observation, they also worked out six different models that could have produced exactly what we saw. And so here, either this was a regular star, a red dwarf, a relatively giant star, or maybe a white dwarf, with a different combination of two different objects, a terrestrial planet a little bit larger than planet Earth, and some kind of a super Jupiter, or some kind of a brown dwarf, possibly as big as 17 masses of Jupiter. But when they observed this location with that Hawaiian telescope, they actually saw absolutely nothing. As in, the actual star was not visible and was not producing any light whatsoever, which actually eliminates a lot of these models almost right away. It meant that this could not be a large star, it could not be a main sequence star, and it couldn't even be a red dwarf, because all of these stars produce enough light to be visible by the Keck 2 telescope. And because this object was only half the mass of the Sun, it could not be a black hole, and could only potentially be some kind of a white dwarf, which means that we were left with two potential explanations. We had a white dwarf orbited by two separate objects, with one being a terrestrial planet similar to Earth, and the other being a brown dwarf. And so eventually the conclusion was that the terrestrial planet here must be orbiting much closer, possibly about 1.9 astronomical units away from the star, whereas the brown dwarf is farther away, maybe 20 to 22 astronomical units away. But interestingly, because that planet was so close to the star, and because it was just a little bit larger than planet Earth, it actually presented us with a very unusual discovery. Not only was this the first ever terrestrial planet orbiting a white dwarf, this was also to some extent, maybe, the future of planet Earth as well. In other words, we potentially discovered a star system that confirms that planet Earth might be able to survive the red giant stage of the Sun to basically one day become a slightly different terrestrial planet orbiting much farther away. 
And that's of course based on the assumptions that at some point, about 6 billion years from now, when the star becomes a red giant, it's not going to engulf planet Earth, but will instead transform it so much that it's still going to remain behind, but turn into something entirely different, orbiting much farther away. And so by the time the Sun becomes a white dwarf, this new Earth is expected to orbit approximately 1.9 to maybe 2.2 astronomical units away from the Sun. Surprisingly, that's exactly where this planet orbits as well. And because its mass is just a little bit higher than planet Earth, it definitely makes it a somewhat unusual and somewhat exciting discovery. But unfortunately, because this was just a micro lens in effect, we're not going to be able to observe this star system ever again. It's just a little bit too far and a little bit too dim for us to detect it. And so unless our telescopes improve quite dramatically, this was probably the only chance we ever had to observe this system and to learn everything about it. But because this is the first terrestrial planet orbiting a white dwarf, and because this was detected only after a few years of observations, statistically it means that these objects and these systems are not as rare as we initially thought. And so chances are we might detect even more of these systems by either using additional observations using future telescopes like Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, or maybe even find similar white dwarf systems somewhere much closer to us. But just the fact that this system exists and the white dwarf here seems to be exactly what we believe our sun will become in about 8 billion years, definitely suggests that Earth might not be destroyed after all, or even more importantly, sun-like systems with Earth-like planets are not as rare as we thought as well. Now in this case, this system obviously doesn't really exist anymore, but we'll definitely discover similar systems in the future. And so in other words, the assumption here is that once upon a time, billions of years ago, this star and this planet were extremely similar to our own planet and to our own sun. And because this planet was also most likely orbiting in the habitable zone of this star, here we can only imagine what it was probably like back in the days. But for astronomers, even discovering a terrestrial planet around the white dwarf is already super exciting. Previously, we've only seen gas giants, brown dwarfs, or just planetary leftovers with occasional asteroid belt. And so discovering an actual terrestrial planet is definitely super exciting. But when it comes to these gravitational lenses, and of course detecting stars and planets using them, everything for us will most likely change in approximately 3 to 4 years. This is going to be the launch of the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, the telescope designed specifically to study a lot of these events and to try to discover as many objects as possible, even though previously they were completely invisible to us. This is going to be an infrared telescope, very similar to James Webb, and one of its main missions is to basically look for planets using gravitational microlensing by focusing on questions like how common are solar systems like our own and what kind of planets we're going to be discovering in a lot of otherwise difficult to see places. And because it's going to be powerful enough to discover extremely small planets, even just the size of our own moon, here we expect to find a lot of rogue planets, a lot of bizarre planets we've never seen before, and possibly even a lot of anomalous objects, such as previously discovered jumbos we've discussed recently. The video should be somewhere in the description. But on that note, this is still a relatively exciting discovery, and basically confirms the importance of studying planets and stars using gravitational lensing as well. But chances are we're going to be making even more discoveries using micro lensing effects very very soon, especially because this telescope has actually been really productive in discovering a lot of different micro lensing effects in the last few years. And so until future discoveries, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.